Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be showing you how you can get into gaming for $250. We're going to be doing a classic Dell Optiplex upgrade, and we're going to be taking you step by step on how to do it. It's very simple, so don't get too scared. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? So this, ladies and gentlemen, is using the Optiplex 790 small form factor tower here, but you'll also find them in DT and mid tower as well. So SFF here, which is going to be the smallest, probably one of the harder ones to upgrade because everything's very compact. You have to use a low profile graphics card, which we have over there. But basically, you can typically get these anywhere from $75 to $100 on eBay. Now, if you pay $100, this is not going to be $250 anymore. It's going to be more like $3 to $350. But we were able to grab this one for $74.99 on a very rare but nice deal. Prices are a little bit crazy right now, given everything going on, and these towers are more in demand because people are working from home. But we will leave links in the description down below to generic searches, and just keep in mind, this is the price range we recommend, anywhere between like $70 to $100. Anything more than that, probably not worth it. But this does come with 4 gigs of RAM. We're upgrading the RAM in it, and we will go through step-by-step -step on how we do that. So how about we go ahead and get right into it? All right, so 790 dissection time. So the 790 that we bought here that is Ugh. The 790 that we bought here comes with two 4 gig sticks. Now, if you notice, the RAM is tucked away under this hard drive cage. Not super hard to get out. However, if you get a 790 DT or mid tower, the RAM is not hidden. It is right there, easy to get to. Like I said, small form factor is the smallest you can get, and it is very compact. So we have four gigs of RAM, two by two. We have the i5-2400 processor, which is just a true quad core. And then we have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which once again, you can buy these for a lot cheaper if you get them without a hard drive and you just go with a big SSD. We just have a small one because we just need a boot drive to go with our hard drive. So let's go ahead and uh, do some upgrades. All right, so we got our SATA plugged in. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and pop this back in because I don't think it's gonna go underneath it or anything. So the good news about SSDs is they don't really need to be um, mounted anywhere specific because they're fully shockproof. There's no moving parts or anything. So SSDs are not picky on, on where they go. All right, guys, so we found a hack. We found the hack. I realized this cable's really short. What do they want you to do with an SSD if you have one? Well, it fits right in there. Pretty, pretty snug too, there's not a lot of room. So um, I think we're just going to add a little bit of adhesive so it's not shaking around. We'll also add like a zip tie as well just to make sure that it's you know not flying around. But like I said, these are, they're fully shock proof. You're really not gonna have to worry about um, anything bad happening to uh, your SSD. You really could just stick it in there. A lot of people do that. They just put it in and forget about it and don't worry about adhesive. So once again, hard drive cage slightly pulled out. The adhesive is now adhe adhesived. Adhered. It, yes, that word. And uh, I think now we're ready for the final steps. And by the way, this is actually in there pretty good. It's not gonna, I mean, it's it can't move around. Um, so the final step's gonna be getting that 1050 Ti, which Matt's going to do. There's not a lot of room for this. The DT, if you do see DT, go for DT, because this is going to be tight. Matt's gonna have a lot of fun. I'm excited to Woo! see it, let's do it. So as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, you have to use a low profile graphics card to fit in these small four factor builds. So what we have right here, 1050 Ti from MSI. Uh, the one thing you do have to do is by default, these low profile cards normally come with just a regular bracket on them. So we'll go ahead and open this thing up real quick. Um, there are different ways to take the bracket off, but it does come with a low profile bracket, or at least it should. There it is right there. Boom, shakalaka. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this thing up. As you can tell, the difference is pretty obvious. It is shorter, significantly shorter. So what we're going to do with this one, it appears it's just one of the, uh, like unscrew these little caps right here and then the bracket should come off. And I think at home, if you have like a, I believe those are quarter inch. Um, if you have a quarter inch socket, those will also uh, take those off. All right, now this bracket, I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. You could throw it at somebody, you can do whatever. And as I realized there is one more somewhere? Yes, there is. There's one more screw hole. Oh, look at this. These actually have a screwdriver port right here. 
or a screw, same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go right here. It's just a Phillips head. And then we're gonna go ahead and give it a little twisty, twisty duty. And then boom, there it is, boom, done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now you can do whatever you want with that. Don't lose these, because you're gonna have to use it for this bracket. But it's as simple as taking the new bracket, lining up the ports. So we have the DVI right here. That obviously is the DVI. Line it up right here. And then I probably would screw this one in first, just so it's actually attached to the board. And then you can do the other ones. Boom, look at that, it's on there, it's good to go. Now, installing it is a whole other story. So what we have right here, very simple, we've done this before on other OptiFlex builds. This little tab right here, lift this bad boy up. As you can see, this is a two lane card. So we have this right here and this right here, and we have two slots right here. So it's gonna fit perfectly, probably too perfectly. Um, we're going to pull these bad boys out, these PCI covers, you can get rid of them. Um, throw them over here. And what we're gonna do, is as you see in here, I'll go ahead and turn it around real quick to make it a little bit easier for the camera to see. We have this topmost blue slot. Well, you really can only put in that blue slot because it is a two lane card. There's physically no way that you can use this bottom one if you wanted to. This top one though, it should fit. It's gonna be nice and snug, but it should fit like. Okay, so it's in here. It is definitely a tight fit. Like there's no wiggle room, but just make sure that there's no cables in the fans. That's the main issue you would have here. And then all you gotta do, instead of like a normal PC where you have to screw it in, just go down, latch it, and boom, it is in there. Now, in theory, you should have everything where you want it. I'm gonna put this SATA cable back to where it was. Again, this is an incredibly tight fit, but we're gonna go ahead, put this thing back together, and then run some benchmarks, because this thing is ready to game. What games will it play? Probably mainly your sports titles. We're not gonna do anything crazy with it, but you can play most games at 1080p medium low settings and uh, have a decent experience while doing so. So let's go ahead and transition to those benchmarks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $250 gaming PC all put together, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, again, this is a $250 Dell Optiplex upgraded PC. You have to tamper your expectations with that in mind. The main reason you would do something like this and build a gaming PC like this is mainly for games like Valorant, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, and most of those like esports titles out there that people are looking to get an average of 60 FPS at 1080p medium high, probably low settings and some newer games. First up, we decided to test Valorant, and on high settings at 1080p, we actually got over 100 FPS, which is kind of surprising, but not really surprising at the same time, because Valorant is a really easy game to run. This would translate over really well to a game like CSGO also. If that's something you're looking to get into, for 250 bucks, you can easily do it with this Optiplex combo. I do feel like we've been recommending the i5-2400 for years now, and for esports titles, it is still a good go-to option, but again, if you're looking to play any AAA titles, I would most likely stay away from this PC unless you are going to be playing at 720p, and even then, you're probably going to have some issues, which we'll talk about later in Call of Duty Cold War. Next up is a game why a lot of people are getting into PC gaming, and that is Fortnite, and on pro settings, which is epic view distance, everything else on low, we averaged around 90-ish FPS with a few dips here and there. This is another game where you start to see that, yeah, you can play Fortnite on this PC, but you start seeing the i5-24 400 hitting that high utilization of almost 100% most of the time, which goes to show you that this older CPU is getting pushed to its absolute limit, which is fine for esports titles because, well, you're getting an over 60 FPS playable experience, but in a game like Valorant and Fortnite, which does push that CPU to almost its limits, it's really not as demanding as some of the newer AAA titles out there, so we kind of know what's going to happen when we launch Call of Duty Cold War. And speaking of Call of Duty Cold War, at 1080p with a 90% resolution scale, we only averaged around 50 FPS with a lot of stutters. Just rocking a quad core in 2020 playing AAA titles is not going to be a good experience, especially a second gen i5, and this goes to show that Cold War is really not that playable. We did try to drop it to 720p, but it does look like the CPU bottleneck is just so severe that no matter what resolution you're playing at, you're going to have a stuttery experience, making Cold War not really that playable on this PC, and we would probably recommend you stay away from it. But again, if you are looking to play esports titles this is the perfect entry-level pc and going into the new year this could be a good option for somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of money to spend wants a pc for online school and whatever the unforeseeable future is of us working from home and maybe play a few games on the side for 250 bucks you really cannot go wrong with this computer and it is super easy to put together yourself if you do follow the instructions at the beginning of this video so overall, I'm pretty happy with the results of this PC. How about we go and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? 
All right, so as you guys could tell, this PC performs really well in games like Valorant, Fortnite, CSGO, you name it. Pretty much any esports game, this thing's going to work great at 1080p pro low settings, and you're going to get over the 60 to 100 FPS that you need. Now, we did try out the new Call of Duty, and of course, that is where its kind of limitations come in. Um, for like new AAA titles, it will play them, but it is likely going to either be under 60 FPS or you're gonna need to really lower the settings and even lower the render resolution to be able to play. But of course, this is a $250 combo. So going this route, you're only spending, well, a fraction of what you would for a PC that can run those games. So do keep that in mind. This is still a really good performer for the money. And as you saw at the beginning of this video, it's pretty straightforward to put together and set up at home. And of course, if for some reason you thought this was just a whole lot of work and you just don't really trust yourself to do it, PCBros.tech, you can actually pick up one of these and we have a lot of other options as well. You can add RAM, storage and whatnot. So check that out as well. But overall, very happy with this build for the money. We love doing our Optiplex builds and giving you all ways to get into PC gaming on the cheap. And if you're interested in picking up any of the parts from today's video, links in the description down below. They are affiliates and they do help us out. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace. 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 Peace.